We are now joined by Baylor women's basketball coach Nikki Collin. The news earlier today that her contract had been extended after three years at Baylor. Nikki with uh, Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, and David Smoke. Was this even something that, that you thought was in the working? And is, is it something that we, I, we didn't even know your structure, but it was great to see the news when it came down from Mac Rhodes. Yeah, this has been something we've talked about, you know, kind of since my year-end meeting um, a couple months ago. And so it, it didn't happen overnight. Um, but I think both sides wanted the same thing, and and that was for for me to be here in Waco. So just just really excited. I think it's it's a great thing um, for recruiting. It's a great thing for security for my family. It's a great thing for security for my staff. Um, but ultimately, it's about you know building on what we've done uh, over the last three years. It is not easy anywhere to, re to replace someone who's won three national titles and growing pains and all those different things that happen. But what did you learn about yourself in the, these first few years about, about maybe, maybe some, some gears you didn't know you had when you, you come to, to building a program in, in your image and dealing with all the new stuff that happens in college athletics uh, on the hour, it seems like. Yeah, I think what's gone on in the last three years, you know, Mac and I had talked about how the job he hired me to do isn't even close um, <laughs> to the job that I'm asked to do now. If you think about within six weeks of me being hired, uh, we Texas and OU announced, you know, they were going to the SEC and there was this, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to the Big 12? Where are we going to end up? Um, you know, and ultimately the Big 12 did an amazing job of, of keeping things together and then building off of that. Um, NIL started that, that July. And that's just like a, um, that thing changes every six months, you know, and now we talk about the house settlement and where that's headed and revenue share and everything else going on. Um, you know, it's almost more complicated than, than I even can understand. So, um, the transfer portal and the portal windows and the unlimited transfers and the unlimited recruiting visits for, um, seniors, juniors and seniors, like it, there's so much has happened in college athletics. Um, but ultimately, um, the thing that, that keeps me, you know, motivated to be here to, to coach at this level, um, are the players, you know, and I think as, as some things, as they change, the idea of, of hitting the practice court every day, that part hasn't changed, you know, and I, I certainly think, um, you know, there are, there are some people thrive in different areas of, of coaching and leading programs, um, but I'm at my happiest, you know, when I'm between the lines and, and really helping these players develop and grow. And it's, it's been a fun summer um, with our team. And so just excited to, to just keep moving forward and figuring it out. I mean, I think the nature of, of where we're at, I don't, I don't care if you've been a head coach for 40 years or, or two, you know, I think we're all kind of figuring out how to navigate, you know, the waters of, you know, where we're at in, in this landscape of college athletics right now. What's it like to uh, move more into the new digs at the Foster Pavilion, uh, get some <laughs> of the, the more of the detail work that wasn't done last season to uh, to see some of the videos has been great of, of the players getting to witness everything for the first time. But what's that whole experience been like? Oh, it's, it's, it's like amazing, annoying, you know, it's like a lot of different things all rolled into one. Like it, it was a unique challenge to move um, in July in the midst of, you know, we had back to back to back, um, you know, five day recruiting weeks. And so, um, you know, going to Mexico and back for the World Cup for me and and uh, but really, really excited. I think this is this is a project that certainly was in the works before I was hired. Um, but I got to really, really put my um, fingerprint on our spaces, um, whether it's our office space, our locker room, you know, and there's, there's a lot of things that are similar about our space in the men's, but also very, very different um, because of how we think, how we move, like how we want the space um, to function. And so it's kind of been like not, not any different than seeing it, it's gone from two dimensional with this, this idea to like actually three dimensional and furniture. And um, so it's, it's been fun. Like, I think, you know, we're still in that as, as anyone who's built a house knows, like, you know, you, you move in and then you find 72,000 things that need to, that you need from <laughs> trash cans to, you know, the, the bigger things to, to touch up paint, to, 
graphics to whatever, but it's going to be an unbelievable space for our student athletes, um, you know, to, to train, you know, really to get, get better from our nutrition area to our strength and conditioning to our athletic training. Um, it's just, it's the best of the best. And so our, our athletes are really, really lucky. Our staff is really lucky, you know, that we get to look out, um, now I know this, the, the Brazos is, is not, um, the Caribbean or anything, <laughs> right. but you know, I think, you know, to go from no off to no windows in our office space to like, you know, trying to figure out where I'm going to put things on the walls. Cause I have more windows than walls. Um, you know, is, is really a good problem. So really, really grateful how have, uh, to be in this space. How have prospects reacted to seeing what you have now? You know, we're just starting. We've been in here, you know, we've been able to kind of walk them through the construction zone over the last six months. Um, you know, but to start to have, we'll start to really be able to, to show it off this fall with official visits. Um, but certainly, um, the people that have been here so far, whether it's unofficially or it's just a walk through day, I think are, are pretty amazed. Um, there's a lot of amazing places out there, um, you know, and it's, it's not to give my recruiting spiel, but ultimately, like, I think players' happiness comes down to, like, do they have opportunity to play? Do they have opportunity to win? And do they like the people that they're going to play with and for? Um, but I certainly think when you get to do it in a space like this, um, you know, it, it, it makes it a lot better, you know, and I think for us, it's, it's like, it's the functionality of it. It's, it certainly aesthetically is very, very pleasing and nice. Um, but the practice court being one and a half times the size of what we're used to, like we really have usable side baskets now. Uh, we can get more kids in at once. Um, and so I think from that perspective, we just have a really, really awesome space. And I don't think there's any doubt that it's going to wow um, a lot of 17-year-olds. I remember talking to you on maybe the day that you were hired and many times since that time. Uh, you never seem to ever waver, no matter what. Ups and downs or in-betweens, championships or critical and gut-wrenching losses like a USC. Did you ever, that we don't know about, ever waver in what your plan and what your game plan and what your mission statement was? <laughs> wow, that's like deep. You know, I think, I think I've had moments where I've like said, this is really hard or, um, you know, but I, but I don't think I've ever shied away from, from hard work or wanting to, um, be great, you know, at where I'm at. I I've never been someone ever. Um, and I've, I've been lucky this way. Like, um, I, I've really never looked for another job. Um, you know, and so because of that, I, the opportunities that I've had, I've just really owned. And so I just really felt like this is a job I could do, that it was a job I could do well. And, you know, it doesn't mean that there weren't a lot of hard times. Um, it doesn't mean that there, there, I didn't ever question myself, I think. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big believer in, you know, ultimately seeing things through. And I think when you have also been smart enough to not say things like this is, this is my dream job. This is the job I've wanted my whole life. Like this was an amazing opportunity and I love Baylor, you know, and I'm going to give Baylor everything I've got, you know, for as long as they, they, they want to keep paying me, you know? So I, uh, I'm really grateful. I think this meets a lot of, you know, who I am, you know, I'm, I'm unapologetically Christian in my approach. Like I have faith is important. Is that my foundation? Um, and so you know, being able to openly pray with our team and 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 share the gospel and 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 have those real conversations, um, and know um, that this is just you know a, a blip on our you know our eternity. But I I so I think it there are a lot of boxes are checked with me being at Baylor. But ultimately, it's about continuing to be passionate about what I do and and love the people I do it with and love the people that I do it for. Um, and I think it's very easy. Um, with with Linda Livingstone and and Mac um, to be in alignment, you know, and to feel really good. I mean, I, I've I've said this to a number of recruits, a number of parents. It's like, how many people get to actually coach at a place where the president of the university played their sport? Mm. Um, you know, like I, I just that's not, you know, in academia, it's like that's just a rarity. You know, let alone someone that played and played women's basketball. So we not only get to sell a female, you know, and, and empowering women and look, our, the leader of our, our university is a female, 
Um, we have strong leaders on our on our leadership team in the athletic department. So, you know, I just I consider myself really really lucky to to work for people that um, care about winning, but also care about people and and truly building champions for life and preparing them. And so. I know it's it's a tagline, but I really I believe it's important, and I think it's never been more important, um, you know, to really empower these young women in, in in a lot of different areas. So I can't say like I, I'd probably be lying if I said I've never wavered. I think we all have self doubt, um, you know. But I think when it comes to the big picture, I might have a bad night, but when I wake up in the morning, I'm like ready to do my job all over again, and I'm ready to do it better. And so. Um, I haven't met a lot of challenges in life that I don't, that I don't want to conquer. You know, I, I just really don't run from, from challenges. And so um, this, this isn't an easy job, but I, I think I get to work with great people and, and surround myself with an awesome staff. And, you know, when a head coach gets a contract extension, it's a direct reflection of the entire staff. And that's just not, you know, something you say, it's something you live um, because these are the people that help you day in and day out. Um, do your job and allow empower you to do the things that you do the best. You know, every head coach is a little bit different in terms of what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, you know, so, you know, I surround myself with people that help, help pick me up in the areas I'm not as good and I get to challenge them in the areas they're not as good. So um, it's, it's a, it's a really special moment. I think for our staff to know that we've done a good enough job um, that we get to do it for a lot longer. What is it like at this moment in women's basketball, something that you and a lot of people have been working very hard your entire basketball careers to get a lot of people to notice that weren't noticing uh, women's basketball to start coming around to the sport and having the athletes that you have available to you now and getting to recruit people into women's basketball now and not only players but fans that, uh, that have been sleeping on the game for a long time? It's wild. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend otherwise. I think, you know, obviously there's a, it's more than Caitlin Clark, but the Caitlin Clark effect is real. Um, you know, going up to the wings game, um, to see Melissa and Odyssey and Kalani and, and Christy Wallace play and, you know, just the number of 22 t-shirts and jerseys that were in line, um, to watch that game. I, I, I've really never seen anything like it. Um, and so, you know, I think this momentum we have, um, is, is really, really special. Um, and I think we, we've got to, we got to really springboard off of that. You know, we've got to continue to grow. Um, and, and I think when people see it, they enjoy it. I think there's still such a grassroots approach to the women's game that there's a different connection, um, between the student athletes and, and fans and young girls and, and not just young girls, but young boys as well. And so, you know, I think we, we just we just have to do a good job of, of taking advantage of this moment and understanding that our platform has never been bigger. You know, when I think about games like we get to play this year, um, you know, we're going to play some games on, on some of the biggest stages. And, and one of the things that and I'm, I'm most proud of um, being at Baylor is that you know, I knew um, Baylor. Baylor's a big brand, and Coach Mulkey built Baylor into an unbelievable brand. You know, on the women's side, um, but we've continued to get, you know, the the big tournaments, the tournament operators, the matchups. They're calling us just like they're calling USC and South Carolina, and and so it's not like our our light has been dimmed. You know, do we want to accomplish more? Absolutely. You know, but I think we've kept the brand really, really strong. Um, and it just looks a little different, you know? And so I think that's, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say it looks different. You know, we play differently. I, I'm not the same person. I'm not the same coach. Um, but I think there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat and be really, really good at it. So, um, so yeah, I think it's an amazing time. There's going to be more games on TV, more eyes on our game. Uh, people are paying attention, you know, and there's going to be the next Caitlin Clark. There's going to be, you know, and, and whether that's Gigi Watkins or Hannah Hidalgo or Malaysia Fulwiley or Paige Beckers, like there are going to be, we're going to have those players at Baylor too. Um, and if one, if they just, you, you watch them, you're going to get to see a lot of other great players. So, you know, I think it's the, the, a really, really good time in terms of, you know, what's going on in our sport. 
Can't wait to talk to you again and bring something deep. Uh, another question to make you think a little bit. No, I'm kidding. We appreciate you. So happy for you. And uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Enjoy the new facilities and the amenities. And thanks for your time. You got it. Appreciate you. you guys. Nikki Collin, Baylor women's basketball coach, got the new extension through the year of 2030 that came out from earlier today.